Welcome to Coptic Inspirations. Today's guest is an interior designer at C Materials. Please welcome Monica Isaac. Hi, Judy. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Great. Mm -hmm. Could you please tell me a little bit about yourself? About myself or about my job? About yourself. Well, my name is Monica and I am an interior designer. Uh, what else? I've been working in my industry for the past four years. Uh, that's my second job. And I love it. I, I really enjoy it. And I feel that God blessed me with this job. That's great. As a high schooler who is looking into careers, I would like to explore yours. Let's start from the beginning. What did you do in high school? Like, did you know this is what you wanted to do? Not even close. Uh, in high school, I knew that I have, I want to do something artistic. So I know, I knew that I'm not, I don't have a passion in science. I don't have a passion in math. I don't have a passion in uh, like English and, and stuff like that. That was never something that really interest, like it was not an interest for me. So I knew that somehow I want to be in the, creative field, whatever that thing is, I didn't know back then. Not a lot of the people in, around us in church were in that field. We either went, especially the people in my, uh, in my age, they either went to med school or psychology. These were the only two branches. I think there was only one that went to economics. Uh, but again, no one, I, I didn't know anyone in the creative field except one girl that was a little old, older than me, that was a graphic designer. Uh, so I did a little bit of research and I took a few classes and I thought I wanted to be a graphic designer. And then I realized that I did not like it. I, I feel like I, I felt it's a lot of computer stuff. Um, it, it was just not my passion, I, I didn't like it. So I decided to take just some art classes and that was not even in high school. In high school, I, I knew it was more, uh, are artistic driven, but I didn't know what exactly. When I went to college, it's when I started taking some uh, art classes. I remember it was like an art 101 and I got in there and we had, we drew, uh, one of the projects was to draw a picture of the room. And it's actually the room that I'm sitting in right now. So in a perspective point. So if a room is like that, I can draw it to you and, and we can show it. Uh, what do you see? If I'm sitting down, how do I see the, the stuff? So I drew that and I'm like, that sounds really fun. What did I do? What did I just do? And then I found out about interior design and I took like one interior design class, the intro, and I felt finally that's something that I really like. And it just went from there. Leading on from that question, how did you choose your college and choose your major? How did I choose my college is I went to SMC again, because I didn't really have a clue of what I was going to do. Um, and through that, it, I chose my career. I personally, for me, I didn't want to move out. I wanted something close and I, that was the choice that was there at that specific point. And then again, how I chose my career by just taking, exploring in classes and so, and click. How did you start your career after college? That was tough to be honest, again, because interior design is a very close community. A lot of referrals and a lot of uh, networking that I did not have by then. Uh, back in school, what it helped me just creating my resume and some of my portfolio that was, when I look at it right now, it was not as strong as maybe other candidates. Um, I graduated in June and I started applying for every single job that you can think about. And I just wanted to get my foot into the, into the door, as they say. And I did a lot of like I did a lot of uh, application applications until I remember I was talking to one of my friends and I felt really down and like I've been applying for jobs for the past two months 
and I have not even I was not even getting uh, interviews and I felt so down I'm like like when is this gonna end and then that same week I got two interviews one uh, I didn't really like I went to the interview and it was fine but I didn't really like the job and then the other one I went to it and it was a new a space that was getting built and the, the, the space was, uh, it was a style store that offered interior design services to the clients. So we would design their bathrooms or kitchens and then they would, in return, they would get all the tiles from us. So we would offer tile and design in the same time. And I started as an assistant in that, uh, in that showroom. And it worked so well. I loved I loved the people that I was working with. And because I really wanted to kind of prove to myself that this was the right career, I, I put my everything in it. And it just went from there. That was my, my first job. So just applied through Indeed. I got the job and it was just why did you move up in that career? Because there is a lot of potentials in it. Um, the, the good thing about interior design that it has a lot of branches. I, I, I think you can never get bored in interior design. There's always something new. There's always a new project. You're dealing with a new client almost in a monthly basis. You are, especially also in the old job because it was smaller projects. So the clients were always changing all the time. Um, and again, I, I, I liked it. I felt I'm good at it. And when you are good at something and you think that God gave you something, you kind of want to do a little bit more in it. I really enjoy it. Do you have any advice for someone choosing that career? If you don't really like it, you're going to hate your life. It's uh, so try it out, take your time. And if, I, I, and I used to hear that and I'm like, I, I don't get it. But I've seen a lot of people, especially in school that went through far and they didn't like it. It was just a career that, or a path that they came across. It was not their passion and they kind of broke toward the end. So if you don't really like it, don't do it try it out and take your time, it's fine. Uh, just make sure that if you get into that career, you like it because it's, if you don't have passion in it, you're not gonna be good. You're not gonna be able to be creative. You're not gonna be able to uh, put that, that a lot of time in it. You have to like, it. it's, it's not something that, it's not a five, like a nine to five job. It's something that you have to be thinking about it all the time. What's your favorite part of the job? The building part. So interior design has a lot of phases. It actually has like about seven or eight phases. Um, what I really like about the job is like the last part when you're building and with all the stress and all the problems that, are, that happens and get thrown to you when you're actually putting all your design and it, it design is, it, is interesting because you're putting a lot of stuff on paper and you're kind of presenting it and you know that some of it will come to reality and some of it will not because life happens and the world happens in between so when you're so so you kind of deal with the issues as you're going so dealing with the issue and resolving it to get to your final cons or final idea or final uh, final goal at the end this for me is the most uh, entertaining and, and the, the fun part of it is knowing that I remember that this masala and how can I say it, this chandelier gave me so much trouble and drove me crazy. But at the end, it's installed, it looks pretty and it's usable and it's useful to the client. So I think that that that's what's the, what's the part that you don't like? like the least favorite part? The stuff that I cannot control. Uh, the, I think there's, 
more more than one. So the stuff that I cannot control again. Uh, sometimes you get into problems that are not solvable, and it gets really frustrating and very uh, and very stressful. Good thing that it is at the end a building. It's not a life or death situation. So thank God, Yanni, I don't have to go through that stress. But the stress of trying to solve something in a timely manner, and what I don't like as well, sometimes uh, dealing with clients at the beginning can be all fluffy and nice. And then when a problem occurs, they, especially with, with residential people or, or, or house owners, uh, their project is their baby. It's something that's very deep in their, like in their heart. So they don't understand that problems does happen. And trying to explain that or trying to give a client something like bad news that you're kind of immune to it, but, but they're not for them. What do you mean that my tile did not come in a timely manner? Uh, I have people that are waiting for, for me to install and I'm losing thousands of dollars because it didn't come in a timely manner. But again, this is something that you have to deal with it. And sometimes it's harder for clients to fully understand that because it's something that's very personal for them. Can you tell me about a day at your job? Pre-COVID or, <laughs> or after COVID because they're very different. How about we do both? Let's start with pre-COVID. So pre-COVID, especially in the job that I'm in right now, uh, we have a very uh, uh, high per showroom. Um, most of the time, I'm either, if I'm not in a job site, taking measurements, looking at the progress of the stuff, I'm on my desk uh, drawing using comp some of the computer uh, programs that we use. Uh, and I'm just drawing stuff and sending it to the construction site. So they would do exactly what I'm drawing. Either I'm, uh, I'm doing that on the computer. If I'm designing something or, or uh, trying to get a concept, getting together, we have a lot of samples in our, in our shop. So we have a lot of tiles. I'm usually carrying tiles and putting them next to each other so I can create like a, uh, like a color board or a inspiration board for clients, mixing tile with cabinetry, with, the, with wallpaper stuff that would mix together, that would create a presentation. Uh, talking to my friends, <laughs> that's a lot of it as well. Uh, so that's pre-COVID. My personal part was pre-COVID was the, a lot of the Again, I like going to construction sites because you get to see it in action. It's a lot of fun. So that pre-COVID, I used to do this a lot. After COVID, not that much. I do it, but not that much. So that's that was my favorite part, uh, pre-COVID. I really like also work like doing 3D renderings, uh, like pre, like doing drawing a, drawing a full house on. On, the, on my on my computer and and seeing it and creating all of these details that was that's part of my also my favorite part of this job and and that moved after COVID as well after working from home it's mostly computer stuff uh, either writing emails fighting with people so they can give me the stuff that I need right now and not delaying uh, solving regular issues that happens. And if I, every now and then, if I need to go to a construction site. So I want to say mainly computers, sometimes uh, in-person uh, construction stuff. Do you prefer pre-COVID or during COVID? I don't know anymore. I am going to go to my office soon. So I'll tell you after. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Maybe we can do a, a recap. I think I'm thankful for both. I I I know a lot of people that lost their jobs during that process. So I, it's not that I'm I like it or I don't like it. I'm just really thankful that I have something to do and something that I love every day. Your day sounds very busy. So how do you balance it with like social life? and others so during my day i feel it's part of honesty to give my full attention to my work 
uh, how do I balance it? I think everyone in my age or the people that I that I deal with, they kind of have the same life and like a job that they want to prove themselves in, especially that I'm early on my, in my career, I feel I have to work more to prove myself more. Uh, so that's that. And again, it doesn't bother me to work a lot. I like it. So even when I have to work after time, but like over time, but I have to work over the weekend or or something like that, I, I don't mind it. I enjoy it. Especially, again, I do the stuff, especially in my overtime, I do the stuff that I love, which is either rendering or stuff like that or drawing. So I, I don't mind it. Uh, and I just try to plan part of being an interior designer and because you're dealing with a lot of small stuff, you have to be a really good planner. So I plan my day and I plan my week. And if I know that I want to do something fun, I put time out of it and I try to balance it out that I'm not always working, but at the same time, I'm working enough to prove myself. If someone is choosing this career, what, foot what footsteps should they avoid? What footsteps they should avoid? I think probably wasting your time because I fell in that problem. Um, doing your research, not every path is the same and not everyone wants to do the same thing. Interior design is a very broad, again, it's a very broad career. So know what you like. And after doing your research and after using your time wisely and thinking about it and giving it your attention, be lenient and be open to change. Meaning that when I got into interior design, I thought keen, I wanted to be in uh, uh, commercial design meaning I want to do hotels, I want to do restaurants, I want to do stuff like that. I was open-minded and I decided to go more in residential and I found a really nice uh, part of it. I enjoy it because you have a client that you see and you have, like, it, there is a more personal feel to it. So if I was close-minded, I would have stick to my, I, I would have not done a lot of other stuff, but be open-minded but plan wisely and know what you want to do. And, and don't waste your time. That's, that's, that's Do you see yourself in this career for like five, 10 more years? Absolutely, 100%. If any, if I still have my hands and my foot and, <laughs> and I'm still in, 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 in good health and I'm able to do it, I'll definitely do it. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, is there, I think that's it. Is there anything that you want to ask me? Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for having me.